Under John Strange's leadership, the Institute supplied many of the technical personnel who were critical to the research and development success of the industry. The Institute itself, under his guidance, was responsible for groundbreaking scientific and technical advances that contributed directly to the prosperity of the paper industry. We see him here presiding over the annual May Conference. This was a favorite time of the year for him because he was able to visit with former students and representatives from paper companies throughout the United States. Traveling was more than a hobby as long as it was with wife Mary and their three children. They all shared his wonderful summer of 1953, which included a conference in Stockholm for two weeks at the Paper Institute in Sweden. Here, John takes time out for a game of golf at the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado while attending a paper conference. As a high school and college student, John was a talented tennis player who earned many trophies and awards. It was a sport he enjoyed for many years. But all fun aside, John also attended to more serious matters, such as teaching his young son Peter the art of mowing lawn. Lawrence University commencement was always a special event for John, and especially so in 1973 when his son David graduated. John also shared many special times with daughter Mary, the oldest of his three children. Here we see them at a Riverview Country Club dance. He took her to her first Packer football game when she was three, and she is now an avid fan. The family wished John could have enjoyed the year the Packers won the Super Bowl in 1996. Another interest shared by the entire family was breeding and showing golden retrievers. Here John enjoys a special moment with his namesake Sean at a dog show. John enjoyed his time with his family, and one of his more worthy professions was that of a grandfather. Though known for his mental pursuits, John met his downfall every Christmas when he had to wrestle with the scotch tape and wrapping paper. John and Mary moved from Appleton to the country in 1974. There was not a tree, a bush, nor a blade of grass when they bought the property, but the 10 acres became a haven for the family to enjoy. It slowly became a warm and friendly home for the family to gather and watch the next generations grow up. <laughs>